Hello and welcome to 5 minutes about Pulsar. My name is Yabing Man. I'm on the streaming team at Datastax. Today I'm going to be showing you extended SDK with Pulsar Java function. If you want to follow along and you don't have a deployment of Pulsar ready to go, you can go to astra.datastax.com slash register streaming and get a free Pulsar instance up and running. If you have any questions about today's video, you can email us at pulsarquestions at datastacks.com. That will reach the team at Datastacks. We will be happy to answer any questions you may have. This is the basic programming model of a Pulsar function. All messages published to the input topic are processed by the function in some way. After processing each incoming message, the function may publish a new message to an output topic and may also optionally generate a message to a log topic. So what is really a Pulsar function? Simply put, a Pulsar function is a piece of code that follows a certain specification and runs as part of the Pulsar cluster. There are three specifications that a Pulsar function can follow. These specifications are language native interface, Pulsar function SDK, and extended Pulsar function SDK. Language native interface is the simplest form and can only utilize the underlying program feature, but no Pulsar specific features. The Pulsar function SDK, or the standard SDK, is the mostly used form so far before Pulsar version 2010. The extended Pulsar function SDK is new in version 2010 and it covers the features in the standard SDK but with two new interfaces, which we will cover with more details later. Both the standard and extended SDKs can utilize Pulsar specific features as listed on the right side of this slide. The Pulsar specific features are exposed in a Pulsar function via an object called Pulsar function context. Please note that the extended SDK is only available for Java at the moment. The extended SDK includes three main interfaces to implement, process, initialize, and close. Among these interfaces, initialize and close are new. When using a Pulsar function, it is likely that people may want to interact with other systems, like a database or a data lake. The extended SDK makes such interaction easier and safer because the newly added initialize and close interfaces make possible a proper initialization and cleanup of the external resources. Okay, enough theory and let's see example, which is we want to use a extended Pulsar function SDK to write a Pulsar function that receives the messages published to the topic and writes them into a Cassandra table. The input messages represent the simplified IoT sensor data and they follow Apache Error schema. The Cassandra table has a similar CQL schema. In this example, we are going to use the Pulsar function to establish a connection to the cluster when the Pulsar function is started. Then the Pulsar function interprets the incoming messages with the Apache Error schema and then insert message data into the Cassandra table. When the Pulsar function is stopped, it closes the connection to the Cassandra cluster. This page shows how we can utilize the initialize and close interface to properly initialize and close the connection to the Cassandra cluster. Please note that the Cassandra connection information are provided as user configurations to the Pulsar function via the context object. Once the Pulsar function code is complete, which is a Java jar package, we can deploy it in the Pulsar cluster using the Pulsar admin CLI command. This slide shows the examples. Now let's take a look at a demo. On this server host, we have a one-node Cassandra cluster, as in the top command line window. And we also have a standalone Pulsar cluster, and we see that there is no function being deployed. Our goal is when we run a Pulsar producer program, we want the data to be inserted into the Cassandra table via the function. Now let's run this producer program first. We see that there are 10 messages are published and let's check whether the message are written in the Cassandra table. We see that there is no data being uh, inserted in the table. Now let's deploy the function. We can see that the Cassandra connect information is provided here as the user configuration. Now let's rerun this producer program again. 
And let's check the Cassandra table. You see that the messages published to the topic are actually written in the table. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please click the like button. That will make it easier for other people to find this video and grow the Pulsar community. If you have any questions or feedback, you can leave a comment below or email us at pulsarquestions at datastacks.com. That will go to the Pulsar team here at Datastacks.